game of chess is like a fight. You must think first before you move. Oh, Front kicks, a pregnant combination of grace and fury unleashed in the blink of an eye. Although commonplace today, front kicks are relatively new to mixed martial arts, and it was Anderson Silva at UFC 126 who would decisively break the paradigm of the technique and the sport forever. On the other hand, they seem to be one of the most popular and commonly used kicks in historical antiquity. So without further introduction, here is a history of front kicks. And before we continue, I'm happy to announce a new partner of the channel, the UFC's fastest growing cryptocurrency app, Crypto.com. And I have a special promo for my viewers. Download with my referral link for a $25 metal card bonus and 30 days of zero fees on credit and debit buys. Crypto.com is my recommended platform and this promo is the perfect opportunity to get your feet wet with cryptocurrency while supporting the channel. Use the link in the description, Crypto.com forward slash app forward slash checkmate. And now back to the video. The earliest evidence of front kicks comes from a set of martial arts hieroglyphics on the walls of Egyptian tombs that date to 3,400 years BCE. These hieroglyphics are found in the ancient temple of Karnak, and they show a system of hand-to-hand -hand combat which included punching, grappling, and kicking. Unfortunately, not much else is known about this ancient Egyptian martial art because the Egyptians were too busy with their fancy schmancy pyramids to write anything down. Lucky for us, there were other ancient peoples who were more focused on beating the shit out of each other. And around 648 BCE, the Greeks unveiled their Olympic sport of pancration, an early form of MMA except they were naked and in a sandpit and only biting and eye pokes were illegal. Pancration makes the earlier sports of wrestling and boxing along with kicks. The Greeks particularly loved front kicks for many reasons, the main one most likely being it offered minimal risk for the athletes since groin strikes were allowed and probably encouraged. Dead, it's looking like the front kick is also effective for other reasons, like its direct trajectory, which often makes it faster than a roundhouse kick and harder to catch and counter. For the most part, they seem to have been used to the legs, groin, or body. Fast forward to the 11th century AD, and we have the Cambodian Empire and their martial arts of Pradal Saray, or free boxing, with many stone reliefs displaying a variety of front kicks and kick catches. It's likely that in armed combat, the front kick offered the most use out of all strikes. A thrusting front kick similar to a Muay Thai teep might serve to knock the opponent off balance and down to the ground, something that would probably prove to be fatal in a battlefield. This is also probably the likely explanation for the Greek preference for front kicks. At these times, most self-defense techniques originated with warfare in mind. Elsewhere in Asia, styles of Chinese Kung Fu like Crane Fist and Hung Gar were well into their development of a different style of front kick, focused on the snap of the knee as opposed to thrusting forward with the hip. This kick stabs upwards into the opponent, and like a crane hunting its prey, it looks to finish the fight in one single flash of decisive violence. These styles potentially influenced Okinawan Karate and Taekwondo, which both prefer to employ the snap variation of the front kick. The Mayageti, or front kick in Japanese, was an early favorite of Lyoto Machida and Katsunori Kikuno, early mixed martial artists with a karate background who employed this style of front kick. For a long time, it was rarely thrown to the face and not thought of as a fight-ending high-percentage technique. That is until Anderson Silva opened the floodgates at UFC 126 versus Vitor Belfort and set off what I like to call the Kakashi copycat ninja effect. When a new technique is proven practical in the real world and at the highest level, everyone begins to incorporate it into their training and to believe in it. With Silva being the number one pound for pound fighter in the world at the time and most people's goat after this performance, he set the gold standard for all others. So I guess we have Steven Seagal to thank for that. A lot of the beauty of MMA is in watching its evolution and seeing old techniques from antiquity resurface. Like the proverb says, there is nothing new under the sun. It's simply a matter of which techniques are relevant at the time. I wonder how many old techniques will be reborn anew in the future world of mixed martial arts. Let me know in the comments if you want more technique and martial arts history videos like this one, subscribe for more, 
and check out some of my new merch below. Thanks for watching and until next time, Checkmate MMA signing out. Peace. Cryptocurrency is taking the sports world by storm and for good reason. Join the flagship sponsor of the UFC's fastest growing cryptocurrency app that is leading cryptocurrency adoption. Crypto.com has every product in the book from buying a dollar in Bitcoin to spending Doge on a metal Visa card. They're on every fight kit. Follow them on Twitter for crypto and UFC updates. And as I mentioned at the beginning of my video, I have a special promo for my viewers. Crypto.com forward slash app forward slash checkmate.